Applying weather stripping or a weather seal around your garage door can help keep the elements out. I already have some of these strips installed here, but I need to remove and replace mine since they're getting a bit worn out and discolored. If you need to install a weather strip around your garage door, keep watching and I'll show you step by step how to do it. This is what I'm using, and it's available online or at local hardware stores. This one is 30 feet long, and depending on the size of your garage door, it may be enough to fully fit around the top and sides. Because I'm replacing my existing weather stripping, I'm going to first remove the old one. This one still works, but it's starting to look a little orange in color and I wanted to change it out for a cleaner look. Don't worry if this is your first time attempting this, it's actually not very difficult to do. But you will need some tools like a drill and drill bits. The weather strip is a molded piece of rubber, and this package also comes with nails to attach it to the garage door frame. But I learned from my first install that the nails were really hard to use. So instead, I recommend using screws for this job. If this is your first installation, I recommend starting with the garage door closed. This way you can position the weather strip in the right place with the correct pressure on the rolling door. Now position the end of the strip at the top with a longer side resting against the garage. Then just drill a small hole in the shorter side of the strip and into the wood trim. The corner is a little bit tight to work in, and if I had to do it again, I'd probably mark the hole and then do the drilling with the door open. Next, I'll take a screw and twist it partway into the rubber strip. And now, hand tighten the screw into the wood trim to hold it up. With the strip in place, use a drill and screw it in the rest of the way. At this point, check the fit. If it's off too much, this first one can be redone because it's on the end. This end can be removed, trimmed, and reattached to make it snug. Once you're satisfied with the first screw, continue and repeat the next one about 8 inches below the first one. The screws don't need to be too close together, but you don't want them too far apart either. This will prevent the rubber from curling, and it will have a cleaner look. And even though I first recommended doing this with the garage door closed, I'll do the rest with the door open. The reason is because there's very little clearance when the door is closed. I was noticing that the spinning barrel of the drill was sometimes scraping paint off the garage door. In a way, the whole job is easier with the door open. That's because on the back, you'll be able to see and place the vertex of the rubber strip on the edge of the frame. Once you've done two or three screws, the rest is going to be easy. Just work one screw at a time and check the position of the rubber strip. Remember to keep a distance of about 7 to 8 inches between screws for the best results. I'm also using gray colored outdoor screws so they're not as noticeable against the white rubber. But I think silver screws will be even more camouflaged. Once the bottom is reached, just press the strip onto the ground to see where it needs to be cut. A pair of regular scissors will cut through this no problem. Now just repeat like before and install the last screw. It should sit snug against the concrete. At this point I can now close the garage door and see how it seals it off. Mine fits perfectly and now I can go ahead and replace the seal on the other side. When I was done, I ended up not installing the strip on the top edge because my garage door seals pretty tightly up on top. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up so I know you guys are with me watching this, and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all my DIY videos. 